Hello and welcome to a tutorial video on Kiko's Knitting Podcast. Today I'm going to talk about eye cords. Um, not quite sure why they are called eye cord, but uh, I want to show you how you can knit them on knitting needles and then the different uses, what you can do with an eye cord. So instead of just knitting the cords themselves, you can use them as a cast on, you can use them as salvage stitches, and you can also cast off stitches. So this is where I cast on, there's where I cast off my stitches. And if you want to do a pot holder or a dishcloth, you can also do a little more eye cord and then have a little hanger. And if you kitchener stitch the stitches together, then the eye cord sort of looks as if there was no start and no end. If you knit a scarf or a blanket, then you don't need the hanger and then you can just have the eye cord running around your whole piece. For a scarf or a blanket or also for a dishcloth, you can um, use the brio stitch in between the eye cords if you do a pot holder or also for dishcloth or for blankets you can just knit garter stitch if you don't want to do the brio stitch or if you have less yarn because you need more yarn for the brioche knitting so that's the things i want to show you today and to make sure that the um, eye cord really goes around you would have to have a provisional cast on so that we can kitchener stitch the live stitches at the end to the beginning um, that's one way or we can use the stitches as salvage stitches um, I did the I I'm going to um, do the eye cord with three stitches and I'm going to show you a fairly simple way of doing a provisional cast on. There are certainly many different ways of doing that. Um, and with this cast on, you put the string around the needles to look like an eight. So I put the yarn over my front needle so that the end is hanging in between the needles and my working yarn goes towards me. Then I come up between the needles, go up over the uh, other, the upper needle. Then I come up between the needles, go down, come up, go over the top needle, come up, go over the lower needle. And I keep moving in this um, figure eight movement. Um, so that's a very simple way of casting on stitches on two different needles. So um, that basically we could start knitting in both directions, but for the eye cord, we will now go in one direction. Uh, I'm using three stitches for the eye cords. You could also do it with four stitches, maybe just with two. There are many ways of doing that. So now I'm holding on to the working yarn. I'm turning my needles around so that the lower needle comes to the top and that's why I want to start knitting. Make sure to hold on to your yarn end because if you lose that you might lose the, la the last or first stitch. So I keep, I hold on to that uh, yarn end. So on the needle that's on to the right or the lower needle the stitches are mounted the right way but the needle that I'm going to knit from now I'm not going to knit a normal stitch, but I'm going to knit it through the back loop just to make sure that the stitch is oriented uh, in the right way so it's not twisted. I want the stitches to um, just look normal. So I go into the back loop again. And now you have to really make sure to hold on to the yarn end so you don't lose that last stitch. I'm going to knit that stitch, hold on to the yarn end and as for the first two rows, you really have to make sure not to lose that yarn end. And with an eye cord, the thing that happens is you never turn your knitting around. 
So I've knit the stitches, but I'm not going to turn it around. I'm just pushing my needle to the uh, to the left so that the stitches come to the other end of my double pointed needle. So the yarn comes from the left, but I do knit the first stitch to the right. And now I can knit the stitches normally because I've knit them, I've already knit them before. And now when I knit the third stitch, I have trapped the beginning yarn a little better. So now I can let it go and I don't have to be so careful anymore. And now we can see the first row of knitting. So again, I'm taking the empty needle into the right hand, push the needle um, to the other side. So my stitches move to the right side of the needle. You could use a circular needle, but that's a lot more pushing. The double pointed needles are a lot easier. Instead of pushing the stitches to the other end of the needle, uh, would also be to just push the stitches over to the other, to the left hand needle, and then you can knit them again. It has the same effect as pushing the needles to the right end of the needle and you can just keep knitting in the same direction never turning your work around. So I have three stitches on the bottom, three on top and I will do a few more rows and then show you the back side of the I-cord. Instead of turning round I always push the needle to the other end and I can keep knitting. And the yarn always comes from the left, but I do knit the stitch that is to the right. And that's that's just all you have to know to do an eye cord if you want just the cord by itself. If you look from the front, stitches usually look a lot more tidy. At the back, they um, can look a bit more distorted, a bit loose, but you can just, um, if you pull on your knitting, it uh, you can make it look nicer so don't worry if it doesn't look perfect it will change later on so for my the little piece that i want to uh, knit in the video i want to have six stitches in between so i need to knit six rounds of eye cord so depending on how many stitches your either blanket or scarf or whatever uh, should have that's the number of rows you have to knit your eye cord so now I have one two three four rows so I could do four stitches I do I will do two more rows so that I have the six rows to um, get my six stitches that I want to knit in between the selvage stitches so that was row one and then row two and then I can start um, knitting casting on stitches basically so now I'm going to turn my work 90 degrees because those are the stitches I have now are my salvage stitches and out of the eye cord I'm going to get my six stitches for the main body of my work so underneath this last stitch that I knit, I can see the stitch that I sort of just knit. And even though I've already knit into the stitch, I can go underneath both the legs of the stitch and I can get my first stitch for whatever I'm going to knit. So there's one stitch coming out of the stitch and one stitch from underneath the stitch. I've used a different needle just to make it a bit easier, but I do want the stitch on the same needle as the selvage stitches. So that was my first cast on stitch. If I turn it a bit, there you can see the two um, strands of yarn that I went underneath. And now I will just go one stitch lower and I will, that's where I picked up the first one. Now I'm going to pick up the next stitch from here. And if that's a bit difficult, sometimes you could also use a, another needle the way I did with the first stitch. You could even use a um, crochet hook. So sometimes having a hook makes it a lot easier to catch the yarn. 
I just split the yarn that's why I'm doing the stitch again that was stitch number two so I'm trying to catch the same stitch one row below go underneath both the strands of yarn that was number three this is going to be stitch number four it's a bit difficult with the slippy yarn oh, the yarn uh, tends to split easily but yeah I can make it do that was four now this is stitch number five and then and then I'm catching the two strands and I have to turn a bit more because the stitches are pulled um, apart a bit more because the stitches are still on the left hand needle again I split the yarn so uh, especially with a cotton like that um, it can be a bit more difficult but you just feel free to use a crochet hook to get um, the yarn through a bit more easily so now I have six I cast on six stitches and I'm at my provisional cast on I will pull out the yarn end to make sure that they're not too um, loose at the end of the row I'm now going to um, just slip the stitches but now I will have to turn the needle so that um, the stitches amount in the right order this but this is the only time I do that it's just for this very first time and now I'm going to slip the stitches from the left hand needle to the right hand needle and from now on I am going to turn my work because now I'm just doing some proper knitting but now that I've turned the needle I have the three stitches from the provisional cast on in the right order so the pattern we're going to knit now is knit all stitches except for the last three so the first three I will pull at the yarn end again to make it a bit tighter so I knit this three provisional cast on stitches these are going to be the um, I cord I will knit that into the back loop looks a bit better this is going to be the I cord now the following six stitches are going to be the main body of my work four five six and when there's only three stitches left on the left hand needle you always slip them with the yarn in front so you don't put the yarn over the needle you just put it to the front just slip the stitches as if to pearl the stitches then you turn your work when you slip you do it as if to pearl but now I'm going to knit I'll knit the three I caught stitches and now for the for the garter stitch part I'm going to knit all the stitches but the middle six stitches I'm going to knit every row but the I caught stitches only get knit every other row um, so I'll knit again until there's only three left bring the yarn to the front slip the three stitches turn my work around and I'll just keep doing the same thing over and over again knit, knit the three I caught stitches knit all the other stitches except for the last three so this would be a very good pattern for a dishcloth a pot holder if you knit tightly enough a blanket or a scarf and I'm going to do one more row with the garter stitch and then I will change to um, brioche, brioche stitch and then I'm going to show you how to cast off the stitches so I'm knitting them all except for the last three pick up the three stitches with the yarn in front turn around now I will just switch from knitting garter stitch to brioche stitch you know if you know brioche, brioche stitch you know that um, you switch between knitting stitches and slipping stitches so as we start with knitting those three edge stitches I caught stitches we knit three stitches 
and as we have knit now we will slip the next one and the thing with brioche is that you not you don't bring the yarn forward as with the edge stitches the i caught stitches but you have to put the you have a yarn over over your needle then you knit one and then you slip with the yarn over the needle with the yarn over and then you knit those are the six stitches and now I only have the three stitches left and those I'm going to slip but as this is the I cord make sure not to put the yarn over the needle and now I repeat knit the first three stitches then slip with the yarn over then I have the two strands of the slip stitch with the yarn over and those are always going to be knit together so you slip with the yarn over knit the two strands together slip with the yarn over knit together and now there's only three stitches left we take the yarn to the front and we slip the stitches without the yarn over and now we can repeat that for as long as our project takes I'm planning to knit a scarf in that pattern um, so slip with yarn over knit slip knit together slip with the yarn over knit together and when there's only three stitches left bring the yarn to the front slip the stitches without putting the yarn over the needle now now here we can see that the I cord is going round the three edges this uh, yarn end will have to be sewn in later I am going to um, add a few more rows just to so that we can see more of the um, brioche pattern um, if you want if you're new to brioche you could just um, pause the video and maybe rewatch just those bits um, but you will probably see that you get into the rhythm very quickly. Um, picking up stitches from an eye cord is also a nice beginning for a hat. Then instead of putting knitting ribbing, you could just knit an eye cord that's wide enough to go around your hat. You can pick up stitches from the eye cord and have a nice edge for your hat. And you could even do it twice. If you knit one hat and then you pick up stitches from like inside the hat from the same I cord you could knit a second hat and you'd have a double thickness hat and maybe even if you could turn it around you have a reversible hat that's a fun idea so now I'm going to cast off um, stitches and it's the same thing um, whether you knit garter stitch or brioche just be sure that the two strands of yarn that are that belong together with brioche are knit together so now I want to um, cast off stitches I am going to knit the first two stitches of my eye cord the way I did the whole time but the third stitch I'm going to knit together with the first stitch of my main pattern in many patterns you just knit them together through the back loop that's a bit easier but I think it looks a bit nicer if you um, slip the first the third stitch as if to knit and then knit it together with the next stitch and now we have to slip the stitches back to the left hand needle so we can start knitting at the right hand side so we knit two stitches slip one stitch slip the next stitch with the um with the brioche brioche stitches I'm going to slip it as if to knit again knit them together like an SSK with the um, if it's garter stitch it doesn't matter how you slip the second stitch the first I slip as if to knit the second you can slip as if to purl or as if to knit if it's a purl stitch or if it's a if you knit garter stitch but with the brioche knit stitch I think it looks a bit nicer with a typical SSK so you slip as if to knit you slip the next two strands as if to knit and now there are three strands that you put your left hand needle through and you knit them together 
then I slip them back to the left hand needle and I continue doing that until I have cast off or knit together all the stitches of the main part of my knitting. Um, so with this I'm almost done. So I slip as if to knit, slip as if to knit, knit together and now I have three stitches on each needle so I am only have the I-cord stitches. So you can see that I've knit an I-cord around all the edges and by casting off like that I have a nice I-cord at the top edge. And now I can either just cut off the yarn and sew those three stitches together, together uh, with Kitchener stitch um, or you could just continue knitting an I-cord um, with those three stitches and then just keep knitting I-cord and if I knit, then graph the stitches together I'd have this little hanger. But I think you know how to do the I-cord now. Um, you could also do buttonholes like that if you do an applied I-cord which is the only thing I haven't shown now. Um, if you do a bit of I-cord extra you can have like um, loops to button up uh, a cardigan or something. Um, so now uh, I'll quickly show you how to do that. I've already shown it in, a, in another video but I'll just quickly do that now. So I cut off the yarn, put it on, on a um, needle and now you hold the, this is how I was knitting the stitches and you just turn them um, so that the eye cords are going straight and you know which stitch to sew together with which stitch. And now I'm going into the first stitch on the lower needle as if to purl, then with the upper needle as if to knit. And then I'm going to switch from going into the stitch as if to knit, pull it off the needle, then the next stitch as if to pull, then as if to pull, take it off the needle, and then the next stitch as if to knit. And the second, so the second time I go through a stitch, I take it off the needle as if to knit, as if to pull, and then the other needle as if to pull and off the needle, and then as if to knit. And then one last time as if to knit. There's no second stitch and then I can use that as the second stitch. And I go into that stitch as if to knit. And I pull it tight and then uh, now when I weave in the ends I can make sure that uh, this looks nice. And now I have an eye cord that's running around all the edges of my knitting. As I said, I'm going to knit a scarf uh, in the future and I also want to do some uh, dishcloths for my kitchen and I would like to use that uh, method and then I can do the hangers. And so the next video should be uh, episode 164, I think, or maybe 65 and then you should be able to see my projects. Okay, see you then. Bye.